please hit that subscribe button. Hey everybody. Better suited to win the Stanley Cup. This and if you are new to the channel, the Washington Capitals, the Boston Bruins. Locked out and he scores! And we're live. Hey everybody, we're back again for another off-season recap video and today we're going to be looking at a rebuilding team in the Eastern Conference, the Ottawa Senators. Ottawa's had a very, very active off-season so there's certainly a lot to talk about. Before we get into it, I just quickly ask that you please subscribe if you are new and hit that thumbs up button if you haven't yet. Both of those things help out so much. But let's get right into it here with the Senators because there is certainly a lot to talk about with this team. They have made a number of significant additions as well as a few significant subtractions as well from their lineup this offseason. Obviously, they were near the bottom of the Eastern Conference last year. They ended up getting the number three and number fifth overall draft picks in the 2020 draft thanks to the San Jose Sharks and the Eric Carlson trade. So they were able to add to this team quite a bit with young guys as well as bringing in some veteran players to kind of round out the lineup for this uh, coming season. So when we look at their additions here, there's been some big ones. I think Matt Murray is certainly one of the biggest. Um, they, they made that trade with Pittsburgh to bring in Murray to be their starting goaltender. This is one of those moves that could go either way. Um, they ended up giving him a big contract as well after the trade. And I mean, Matt Murray is a guy that's won two Stanley Cups that, that has shown that he can be a high-end goaltender in the NHL, but he's also a guy who's significantly struggled at times over the past couple of seasons and literally just lost his starting job with the Pittsburgh Penguins. So, you, you know, you look at that Murray deal and they are betting a lot on Matt Murray being a franchise goalie. And that, I think there's certainly a risk there because Murray the, was not good the past couple of years with Pittsburgh. So it's going to be really interesting to see how that works out for the Senators and if Matt Murray can be that franchise goalie that they want him to be. They also brought in veteran scorer Evgeny Dadanov, who played the last few years with the Florida Panthers. So uh, Dadanov comes in, veteran guy, consistent 20-plus goal scorer, Hope, hopefully a guy that's just going to come in and bring them some top six scoring for, uh, to, to their lineup and, and at least 20 to 25 goals this coming season. Uh, Alex Galchenyuk, another interesting move here. Galchenyuk is a guy who's kind of been bouncing around a number of different teams the last few years. Um, he really can't seem to find a home. He's kind of been disappointing everywhere he's, he's gone. Um, this kind of almost feels like a last chance for Galchenyuk, you know, a rebuilding team. There's absolutely nothing to lose here, uh, for the senators. You're, you're not going to make the playoffs next year anyway. So you throw Gal you give Galchenyuk a chance. If you get the good Alex Galchenyuk, he could be a really, really good middle six player for them. If it doesn't work out, he'll just be gone at the end of the year. Austin Watson, this was an interesting one, a kind of a tough fourth line type guy uh, coming in from the uh, Nashville Predators. They traded a fourth round pick for him. Uh, I really, I've always been a big fan of Austin Watson. I love his game, so I, I really like this move. And this, he's going to be a guy that's going to help protect a lot of the young players on this team because um, you, I certainly expect them to be playing a number of guys who who are going to be in their first or second NHL seasons, more skilled players, young guys coming up who are just starting to get their feet wet in the NHL. you got to have someone out there to make sure that they don't get pushed around. And Austin Watson is certainly not going to let his young teammates be pushed around. Another guy much, uh, much like that, except a defenseman, is Josh Brown, who they also brought in from the Florida Panthers. Uh, they made a trade for Brown. And uh, he's a physical, I like him kind of as a bottom pair guy. I, I don't see him as a top four defenseman, but I think he's a very solid bottom pair guy who's big, physical, willing to hit, and can drop the gloves when he needs to. So I, I like the addition of Josh Brown as well, and he's still fairly young. So they, they, could, uh, they could get the most out of Josh Brown and, and really catch him at the peak of his career. And Eric Goodbranson, a veteran guy, um, you know, tougher defense when he was a really high draft pick when he was drafted, never has lived up to his draft status, but is still a solid, you know, bottom four D-man who, who brings physicality and a veteran presence and leadership to that locker room. So 
Um, you know, they're, they're, they've, those are kind of depth moves with Watson, Brown, and Good Branson, but they're moves that I like. And on, on shorter term deals, um, you know, they're going to help them through this rebuild. And then if they don't want to commit to them long term, they can just move on at the end of these contracts. We haven't even talked about the draft yet. Like I said, they got picks number three and five in the first round of the draft this uh, season, this past year. And they got Tim Stutzla and Jake Sanderson with those picks. Stutzla, a forward, Sanderson, a defenseman, two incredibly talented young players who uh, I think are going to be stars at the NHL level, maybe even superstars at the NHL level, um, particularly with Stutzla. And uh, Jake Sanderson is not going to play in the NHL this year. Um, He's committed to the University of North Dakota. He should play at least one, if not two years of college before trying to make that jump to the NHL, similar to what Kale McCarr did um, with Colorado. You know, he was... He was a fourth overall pick. He played two years at UMass Amherst and then made the jump to Colorado. I would expect a similar path to the NHL for Jake Sanderson. He's going to North Dakota. Um, Tim Stutzla is the one that could play in the NHL this coming season. I don't think that decision has been made yet. Um, He could stay in Europe for another year and then come in for 2021-22. Or if they want him to play in the NHL this coming season, I think he's perfectly capable of that. So we'll see what happens. Sub- subtractions wise, um, they bought out Bobby Ryan. Um, Bobby Ryan, was his contract, he was making a lot of money. Uh, obviously a great story and someone everyone was rooting for in the NHL, but he was his contract was not very good and uh, Ottawa decided to buy him out, which from a hockey standpoint certainly made sense and he's now with the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, Anthony Duclair... They did not uh, give give him a qualifying offer. He wanted big money in free agency. He has yet to sign. He did not get the money that he thought he was going to get in free agency. So I guess the door could potentially still be open for Duclair to return uh, to the Senators, but he has not signed anywhere yet. He's still an unrestricted free agent. Mark Borowiecki, um, long-time, you know, tough, uh, really good veteran defenseman, stay-at-home defensive D-man. He uh, left for the Nashville Predators, so he is no longer with Ottawa. He's in Nashville now. Ron Hainsey, another longtime veteran defenseman. He um, Also, his contract was up, and he was not re-signed, so uh, he's still on the free agent market. Not sure if he's going to get a deal or not. He, We might have seen the last of Ron Hainsey in the NHL. And Craig Anderson, longtime goaltender, uh, also unrestricted free agent and was not brought back. Obviously, with them getting Matt Murray, he's not coming back. And uh, I would be Matt, Craig Anderson has more than likely uh, played his final NHL game. So those are the subtractions and additions for the Ottawa Senators this offseason. That's not even all of them. That's just uh, that's that's uh, the major ones, the key ones, but uh, they've made some other moves as well with more depth type guys or AHL type guys. But uh, yeah, it's been an active off season for the rebuilding Ottawa Senators. I think for the most part, they've had a good off season. Um, they're a team that knows they're still a few years away, and <clears throat> excuse me, they're going to be letting their young players still continue to kind of develop and grow, and and kind you know they know that they're not all NHL ready yet. So. Um, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how this team rebuilds versus how some of the other rebuilding teams do it, like Detroit, like New Jersey. Um, it, it's going to be fun to watch. And But I think overall, Ottawa's had a very solid offseason. So I'm going to hand things over now to uh, a fellow hockey YouTuber who wanted to talk about the Senators for me and go over some of their moves and give his opinion on that. And it is NHL Hockey News Reports. So take it away. All right, everyone, thank you, John, for uh, letting me uh, be on the video here today. So today we're talking about the off-season moves, what they have done, and they did so many off-season moves that they ever by the Ottawa Senators. What a great off-season they had. They didn't take little steps. They took some big steps, really changed the club around a lot. Of course, starting with buying out Bobby Ryan, that was the big thing, uh, buying him out and bringing other guys in the draft signings, trades, um, all three options they did a really good job with. And they did a really solid job in recognizing their picks. We'll get into that, what they have done. So um, 
The little starry things, <laughs> the red ones, mean they are new. So kind of projected line, not, actually it's not projected line, it's just out there. Who's the left wingers, who's the centers, who's the right wingers, who's the left defenseman, who's the right defenseman, who's the goaltender. So that's basically what that's out there. So the new ones have the little star things. And just to let you know who came in and arrived. So, starting off with Dadnoff, Dadnoff, $5 million for three years, absolutely fantastic deal, I have to say. That is a fantastic deal, and it's three years, not too much term, good amount, mon amount of money because they were definitely below the cap, which many teams would love to be below the cap so they can be in cap compliance, right, of $60 million. A lot of teams love to be there. Cap is gold these days, right, but Ottawa had that chance to pick up Dadnoff, and he can, can go to a team that can, he can be that guy to help out these young guys who really become solid NHL players. Stutzer came to the draft, third overall, what a great player he is, and what a skater, what a German, uh, he's from Germany, what a fantastic player he is. Can't wait when he plays, either that's this year or next year, whenever that is, we can't wait to see him play. I'm assuming he'll play next year, I think he will, but who knows? You know, you don't know until preseason and whatever happens. And if he gets told, you gotta go, we're not gonna keep you. Or they say, yeah, we like you, keep, we're gonna keep you. They also got Alex Galchenyuk for one million and five, one point zero five million. There we go. <laughs> and he's a guy, not too long ago, he was a fantastic player. Not fantastic, but a solid, good goal scorer who in 15 to 16 season had 30 points. And going from there to 16, 17 season, I have to say, he was about, uh, not 30 points, I mean 30 goals, my bad. Uh, 15, 16, 17 season, he was going to get 30 goals. Because without that injury, he would have got 30 goals. Against the Kings at West Coast, they lost three players. Markov, Dione, and Galchenyuk. And Galchenyuk lost that last couple of weeks almost like a month or two um, of scoring goals that year. So, knowing that, he didn't get 30 goals, but they traded him to Arizona. He got 40 points. I think he can get about 40 points next year. About 40 points. Maybe we should say 30 points. They bring him in. They also bring in Michael Haley. They just brought him in. Just that. Fourth line. If he gets on the fourth line, but in the AHL, he's out there. He can play. Uh, he's not going to score goals really for you. He's more of a physical presence out there. And that's what he's there for. Moving on to another defense. Three players brought in. Well, maybe two for this year. Uh, one for the draft. Jake Sanderson. We thought Drysdale. If you were told. Fifth overall. Before, you know, Pierre Dorian said. We picked Jake Sanderson. If you were told. They are picking defensemen. All of us would be like, Jim Drysdale, right? Nope, it wasn't Jim Drysdale. It was Jake Sanderson. What a great defenseman he is. He probably won't play next year. Um, maybe a year or two. I'm thinking just a year for him. So we'll see what happens to him. Josh Brown, they brought up. Uh, they brought from um, the Panthers. I like this pickup by the Ottawa Senators. He's a solid defenseman. Bot, uh, bottom four defenseman. But I do like Josh Brown. I think they can... Kind of find something with him for sure. And they bring Gabranson, who's about $4 because they need some cap in to be cap compliant at $60 million. So uh, they brought in Gabranson. Why not? He has a year left. And he played pretty well at the Ducks, so maybe this can kind of transfer to the Senators, which we know he will get some time to play. He will. It's not like he'll play on the third pairing and he'll get limited time or even a seventh defenseman. No, that's not him. For this... I think he'll play pretty solid, and they get some time. So, you bring some veterans in, they kind of help out these young ones. You can't have a whole young team only. You need some veterans in there, too. And another guy they brought in caught weaponizing those second-round picks they had. Boy, do they use those second, that second-round pick in a prospect to bring in Matt Murray. They, um, oh, <sighs> sorry. Matt Murray, Ryan Murray, sorry, my mind going a little kook there on me. Uh, Ryan Murray, too many movies to think of. Yes, Ryan Murray, I know it's not, uh, not Ryan Murray, I mean Matt Murray, I'm sorry. 
Matt Murray is a solid playoff performer experience in those two rookie and sophomore seasons winning the Cups. Uh, but he had those shaky start, uh, shaky games, uh, or seasons, a couple, two, about two seasons of shakiness. But he's a guy who didn't have bet on the best defense uh, uh, for him. So maybe Ottawa can help him out here. And it's a good place for him. He's really excited to come. And if I was a, if I was Matt Murray right now, I think I would be super excited to come and play for a team like this. The bright future and the long-term contract he got, I think I'd be really happy. They know this team is not going downward. It's going nothing but upward. So thank you very much for John for letting me on. And hope you enjoy this video. And I hope you enjoy the rest of John's video here of Off the Wall Hockey. Thank you very much. And goodbye. Thank you so much to NHL Hockey News Report for coming on the channel and talking about the Senators. Um, yeah, he he went over a lot there and, and pretty much all the moves that they made. I've talked a lot already about all the moves that they made. Overall, I think Ottawa's had a pretty solid offseason for a rebuilding team. Uh, I, I like some of the veteran moves that they made. I think that those will be good guys in the locker room, I think. Uh, I, I like the depth moves, you know, guys like Austin Watson and Eric Goodbranson and Michael Haley coming in. Like th those are guys that are going to protect the younger players. They're going to play, you know, bottom bottom of the lineup type roles, but they're going to be there to protect the younger players. They're going to be good veteran guys in the locker room. They're going to be, you know, those are the kind of guys that will do anything for anyone on their team and, and are, you know, really high effort, high energy guys. And we'll just try and try and bring as much of that to the table as they can in a Senators uniform. And while we know the Senators aren't going to be a playoff team this year, and and they're still in in a rebuild here, that those are good guys to have in the locker room to kind of help the young guys along. And then if anything ha happens out on the ice where a younger player or a smaller player is getting pushed around, then you know that they're going to come calling real quick. So um, I really like the moves that they've made. Obviously, they had a great draft getting Stutzla and Sanderson. Um, they've got a lot of young talent in the pipeline there in Ottawa. Um, they're going to be good. They are going to be good in the future. Um, I don't, they're not there yet. They're not ready to make that jump yet. But when those guys really come out into the NHL and really start to solidify themselves as NHL players, the Ottawa Senators are going to be a good team again. So, um, yeah, overall, I think they've had a pretty solid offseason for a rebuilding team. I like a lot of their moves. And, that's what I've got on the Senators. So like, comment, share, subscribe, follow on social media. All those links are down in the description. If you'd like to further support the channel, the links to our Patreon, merchandise store, and donation link are in the description as well. Keep spreading the word about this channel. Let's keep this thing growing. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll talk to you guys soon.